it's it's just a stand there and take it, if you will. You know, um, we have to stand in the line and get all the shots, get all the, uh, um, you know, <laughs> the anti-malaria drugs, all the things that we have no choice in because we're being deployed to an area where there are some nasty bugs that we could be exposed to. Um, or, you know, uh, there could be a, a terrible biological agent or a chemical agent, uh, you know, all this good stuff and horrible stuff and killer stuff. And we have to stand in line and take these shots, whether we like it or not. Well, at least they're allowing us the choice or our loved ones the choice to say, yes, give them a shot at the hydroxychloroquine, see if it works or don't try it. And I would hope, and I think my family knows the way that I feel that I wouldn't want uh, an unfounded treatment, um, especially something that could kill me, and especially something now that has a, a 28% higher rate of, of me dying versus only 11% of those patients died that received standard care. No, that's a no-brainer to me. It's nuts. Um, you know, there's another thing that they're doing as well that will get, and I say all this, that the VA is doing some great work. Don't get me wrong, because they're actually helping us find a cure for COVID-19. That's what's really, really good about this whole situation. But we've got to do it in a very, you know, statistically approached manner. It has to be studied. It has to be verified. We have to know that we are not going to kill people at a higher rate than what they would um, die just with standard care. So we've got to make sure that we're taking care of people the way that they should be taken care of. And there's a great – another study that's being done right now at the VA where they're giving a prostate cancer drug uh, trial out. Now, you may sit back and think, well, what in the world does a, a prostate cancer drug uh, have to do with, with COVID-19? Well, also in the same breath, what does a malaria drug have to do with the treatment of COVID-19? Good question. Well, that's what they're studying. So researchers at the Department of Veterans Affairs and the University of California, L.A. are stuttering, 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 studying whether a chemotherapy drug for prostate cancer can help reduce the severity of COVID-19 in men. They also found, which was very interesting, and this is something that I hadn't seen, that men are actually more likely to die worldwide of COVID-19 than women. And – there's a lot of people trying to figure out why, and this is the very first time – this article on military.com is the very first time that I had actually read that. I didn't know or even heard it too. I heard it reported. I didn't know that men were dying at a higher rate than women were from COVID-19, and I bet that is really eye-opening to you listeners here on the Honor Across Arms podcast today that – Men are actually dying at a higher level than women from COVID-19. I've not heard it anywhere. Have you all? So go look it up. Find out. You know, um, don't just I'm, – I'm the old LeVar Burton kind of guy. Don't just take my word for it, right? Um, the goal with this, this new therapy treatment, the chemotherapy drug that they're doing for the prostate cancer treatment, the, the goal with this is to see is it going to help us get better from COVID-19? Now, there is a theory behind this that COVID-19 actually works better when you have higher amounts of testosterone in your system. So what does this drug do? This drug that is utilized for prostate cancer treatment actually reduces the amount of production of testosterone in your system. So you, th you think – how does this have an effect on it? Well, apparently it's theorized that COVID-19 actually with testosterone, the proteins that are developed there, it helps it basically grow essentially. It helps it um, proliferate. It helps it stay strong in your system and it helps it kill you better, which is horrible to think. But there are a lot of different theories as to why this is occurring uh, including that men often have higher rates of underlying health conditions or possess a weaker immune response than women, which you know could very well be the case. And that's what they're aiming to figure out with this study. They're trying to explore whether reducing the production of a protein that serves as a gateway to the coronavirus in the lungs can affect health outcomes. So if the protein's growth is, is thought to be fueled by testosterone, the thought is that if we can reduce that testosterone, testosterone level in the, in the male body, uh, then we can help that man you know, survive. 
it's a really interesting scenario. And it's one that, you know, it's got some really good positive benefit to it because it's not it doesn't kill people or it doesn't have the negative consequences that hydroxychloroquine has with it. Um, all it does is reduce testosterone levels in the body and it doesn't have any really bad detrimental effects like hydroxychloroquine does. Hydroxychloroquine has some horrible, horrible side effects. It causes heart, heart arrhythmias. It can cause uh, death, premature death, which is terrible. But this prostate cancer drug actually doesn't have those kind of side effects. So, I'm really interested in seeing where this study that's being done right now at the VA in conjunction with the University of California, um, California, L.A., what it's going to come out to say. Because if we can get some solid benefit behind what's happening in the veteran community and put that into black and white data and what's happening, we can really, really save lives around this country and then around the world. There are more than 12,000 veterans and VA employees that have been diagnosed with COVID-19 since March, and there are 1,202 veterans that have died. 1,202 of our brothers and sisters have passed away from COVID-19. You don't hear a lot about these, and one of the worst parts about this whole process is that, uh, unfortunately, the Honor Guard and we had a great uh, guest, uh, Victor Solar, who, who gave us a good understanding of what the Honor Guard was on one of our previous podcasts. But the Honor Guard has not been able to do a military salute to those veterans who have passed away. So they're not going out and doing the 21-gun salute. Um, they're not passing a, a, a flag to the fallen member's family because they're not allowed to during this time. So you're seeing a lot of our brothers and sisters. It's 1,202 who have died. That are, uh, their families are actually having to put off their funerals or their memorials because, you know, we earned our right to be laid to rest with a military funeral. And we deserve, we damn sure deserve that right. And I wish to goodness that this COVID-19 thing wasn't going on. And I wish we could just kick it right in the mouth and say, get out of our way. We're doing these military funerals, whether you like it or not, but Unfortunately, we can't risk any more lives. So those families, and and I'll be honest with you, it, it's happened in my own family. Our family uh, had a loss of one of our veter veteran uh, family members, and it's horrible because you know we can't actually do a military funeral until <laughs> weeks down the road. Uh, who knows? Maybe even months. Um, it, it's terrifying to think about. But 1,202 veterans have passed away, and it, it just breaks my heart. But there's some great things that are coming out of this because we're doing an amazing study, a number of studies at the Veteran Administration where our brothers and sisters, you and I, and those who have served with us and those who love us that are listening here on the Honor, Honor Across Arms podcast, we are going into the hospitals, the veterans are, and we're having that choice now. Do you want to try a treatment like a drug that is utilized for prostate cancer? Not going to have a whole lot of side effects to it. But it could save your life. Or, hey, hydroxychloroquine is also an option too if you're interested in this too. We could just do nothing and treat you like normally as well. We've got that choice, and our, our family members have that choice too. So that's a great thing knowing that, yes, it's horrible and terrible that our brothers and sisters are passing away and dying, can't receive a military funeral, but they're still – benefiting and serving our country now because all this information and all this black and white data that's coming out from these studies will be shared and will save lives in the future. We'll save lives. That's really exciting. That's who we are, that even in death, we still serve this country. That's who we are in the veteran community, but that's also who the United States is. You know what? We're all in this together, as I mentioned earlier, right? That's that great saying. But we're going to get through this. So I encourage you all to stay strong. Try to stay up to date on what's happening with vaccines, what's, what's happening with medical advancements and treatment of COVID-19. And stay tuned to the Honor Across Arms podcast because we're going to bring it to you here. We're going to bring it to you here. We're going to give you the true information, the black and white data. And we're going to tell you when we're going to get out of this and we're going to get out of this. And we're going to be better in the end for this. Thanks so much for joining us here on the Honor Across Arms podcast today. I'm Joshua Littrell signing off. Take care. Line over there, over 